What's up, Pirates? Wraith here with Awaken TCG, and today we're going to be talking about green, purple, Dofi. So this leader was actually supposed to be played. It was played uh, a week ago for our locals before I went to Texas. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make the video. We were supposed to get it out, uh, I think, on Saturday. And I honestly wasn't satisfied with, uh, you know, the games I played and, and the list I came up with. And so I am going to play the list that I ran here on some sim matches, go over the list. Uh, I think it's really, really neat concept, but it does have some flaws. Uh, I went through a lot of iterations on the deck and I just I couldn't, you know, find something I was happy with. The Moria matchup was really tough. RP Law had answers against us. Um, which was supposed to be our best matchup. And so uh, this is what I came up with in the end. So our four birdcage, obviously we want to see that. That's one of our biggest cards here. But instead of running a purple engine to Don Minus, Don Minus, uh, we opted to go for a very defensive build and just go for kids. So as soon as our birdcage pops, you know, we can place this kid, and, you know, turn him into another wall. And so we have, uh, what is this? Our eight two Ks that are searchable. We have our three resonantes that go along with our Captain Kid. So if it gets popped, we can go ahead and save it. We have our four Dofies that are um, searchable by, by one of our twelve searches. We have four off whites. That's a plus four thousand search top three for Don Quixote. We have a one drop counter event search top five for Don Quixote pirate, and then obviously our baby five searcher. Um, we have a Charleston that helps us get rid of our bricks. So it is a two cost event plus 4,000 counter. And then you discard one card from hand. If you do set up to three Dawn active. So if you have extra bird cages in hand, any extra boss monsters that you need to get rid of, you know, you can leave two Dawn up at the end of your turn. You know, maybe you 10 drop, you leave two Dawn up because of leader effect. You Charleston. Now you have another two, another three active to use some more events like, you know, this and in return, we can use this and things like that. We have three Hody Jones. Um, I'm not sure if, this card here is needed, but I think it's really good, especially if we don't see our birdcage. We can see our Hody Jones and keep our tempo up. Um, Sugar, an insane card. It sets up our Doflamingo. It plays into birdcage. Uh, so many good things. So it's a very, very, very defensive deck, a very big wall. And so we're going to go ahead and run some matches and see if we can um, potentially, you know, have some good matches here, show, showcase the deck a little bit. And so against a BY Luffy, I think we want to go, I think we want to go second. I think we want to go second. Uh, we probably want to start off with a searcher, no searcher. And our hand is kind of bad. I mean, obviously we have a lot of uh, boss monsters and a lot of, a lot of events. So one thing that this deck is good at is breaking, right? So um, just one of those things, while we do have a lot of searches, like here we have an off-white search that can potentially search us, um, you know, one of our um units maybe a searcher um it's not it's not the best um i think here we just have to pass we don't really have too many options here right now um like this is one of the issues that i had when i initially started testing the deck is you know if we don't have search for our two dawn uh, if we're on even curve our four dawn feels bad and then even our six dawn like we just play stage pass um, and then not until our eight down where we can actually play Hody, we can play kid. So our even curve feels really bad. Obviously our 10 drop play is super strong with our, with our Doflamingo, but there's no in between plays other than searching. And so a lot of the times it just feels kind of bad. And so, uh, luckily here, we're able to find a searcher and we can go ahead and just straight up just counter. Um, but I mean, a lot of the times it feels really bad. So luckily we do have a searcher here. We can go ahead and. Uh, play that searcher. Um, let's see what we're going to grab. Maybe grab another sugar here. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab another sugar. I think the sugar is going to be a lot of value for us. So let's go ahead and pop the Doflamingo. So like there, obviously we had a turn because our off-white was able to search us a baby five, which is good. But for the most part, if we, like, let's say we don't find a baby five. Like what is our... We have a sugar in hand. We could still use a sugar, but you know, besides that, what are we really doing? I just feel like it's just, it's very, I'm not sure. It's just, it's not cohesive enough. Like we can consistently see our 10 drops, but the deck just overall isn't as 
co cohesive as I would like. And he's swinging eight at the trigger. Okay. Um, it's just I don't know. It's one of those things where you just have to, I guess, keep testing, and you know, we'll slowly find a iteration of the deck that we'll like. But um, the deck is already pretty bad, and so um. It's just one of those things where it's like, is it worth the time? Is it worth the time? So like here, even on our six, though, we don't have much of a play. Our sugar rests a four drop. And so um, I'm not really too sure if we play a sugar here. We probably just go ahead and search and just continue searching and continue searching, uh, which is probably our best play. There's not much else for us to do on this turn. I mean, we found our bird cage, but it is a little too late. We're probably just going to go ahead and grab the off white here just to have some defense on our side on our turn of things. Um, and then honestly, probably just play the sugar again. And we can't even swing at life. We'll just go ahead and swing at the Hiori so he can't swing into our searchers. Uh, but I guess our 10 drop turns are going to be really big here, especially in this matchup. But as you guys can see, what did I really do on our two, four and six on turn? Uh, obviously, this would have been a nice turn to play stage, but then he just never rests his Luffy. It's just one of those things, like I'm saying, it's just, I really couldn't figure out a list that was functional and that I was honestly ready to share with you guys. Um, obviously, I love this leader. I won my regional with it. But, you know, I, I was satisfied with, you know, the locals that I had took. And so that is the biggest reason why I just didn't upload the video. And so, you guys can kind of see this video here uh, instead of that. And so you guys want to see how it plays. You know, I'm showing you guys right now. I know I've had a couple of comments asking where that video was at. So I apologize. Um, Do we save this sugar here? I six, we're going to eight Don. I don't think we need to save it this turn. Um, The Garp just got played. He's going to five drop. We have the 2k to save it. I think it can stand one more turn, right? And we just found our fourth Del Flamingo. Um, we'll just go ahead and save it. That's probably not the right decision, but you know, who cares? At this point, who cares? Ace. Ace swing at Sugar. No, he didn't even swing. Um, we probably search, search. Um, Search, search, and just swing, I think. I mean, honestly, we're in a pretty good spot here against this BY Luffy. Um, our 10 drop, like, doesn't matter what he swings with. We're still at four life. Like, we can swing, whatever. We're going to start dropping our 10 drops. Because we don't really have defense if we play Kid into the Rosinante. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely resting the ace here. Every time, every time, he's going to swing the Garp. Sabo, interesting. Is he going to zero here? Like he plays a Flampe. Grabs another Sabo. He can probably Flampe here. He has a couple of options. Oh, he's just going 7K at Sugar. Cool. We will take that. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know if he should have swung there because we're going to 10 down, but that is his decision. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we just have to play the 10 drop. There's no other play. And then uh, I guess we can swing into this. He can probably block. Oh, maybe I just swing into it first. I think it's a free block to save it. I mean, it's a two, 2k body. It doesn't really hurt to have it on board right now. Um, our 10 drops are going to just get insane value. Um, him not being able to have that Luffy leader swing is actually so good for us. I and For some reason, I have no idea why. I'd be making these videos. I go into some random matches in Sim, and it's always the BY Luffys. And I never lose to them on uh, when I'm making the videos. But oh, let it be tournament and let me be on Moria. <laughs> oh man, 
I am still scarred to this day. My LA trip did not go well. Um, anyways, if you guys don't know, I just dropped an OPO6 Moria guide on Patreon for free. I know it kind of sounds weird. OPO6, I know. I made this a while ago. I never got to editing it because it was like over an hour worth of footage. I found my editor. I didn't. I did not give him a timeline. I just wanted him to do a good job on it, and uh, you know, kind of get the ball rolling on you know guides for the future. Kind of create templates for certain things, uh, just so his editing can be faster for the future. And so I just dropped it um, on Patreon for free. If you want to go check it out, it's literally free. It is OPO6, and while some of the stuff is outdated and some of the stuff does not pertain to our current set, we're technically still on OPO6 for one more tournament. And so you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, obviously, it was before Brooks released. It was before a bunch of stuff. And so um, some of the stuff still pertains, you know, but for the most part, um, yeah, it's a little outdated. So, uh, but you can still check it out. It's, I think it's going to be, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth checking out. Oh man, what a 10 drop. That is a 10 drop, huh? What a 10 drop. He took. Is there any Sabos in here? He does. He does. He does indeed. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, he's blocking anyway. Maybe I just go ace. I go ace. Doing ace instead of lead and he has the moria he has to have the moria it's b y luffy they always have the moria but i don't think it matters too much um we're gonna have two 10k swings next turn even if he double sabos um but yeah patreon guide out right now as you're watching this video it's out right now and then tomorrow even more hype for patreon back to back i have a free guide coming out for one of the top three leaders by one of the top three players in North America. And I'm not going to say who or what, but you will see on Friday morning. I'm going to make a tweet about it. It's insane. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let's go ahead and see how we're going to win this match. Okay. I hate BY Luffy, by the way. If you, if you play BY Luffy, we cannot be cool. Unless you're Eric Quintana, then we could be cool. But like besides anybody else, we cannot be cool. And so I think we just 10 drop again. Honestly. I mean, we can get some 2Ks out of his hand. But I think we just 10 drop again. Right? And then it just secures it. It secures us the win. But I think this is why Bonnie is so good. Like I made Bonnie and I played Bonnie at locals today. Bonnie is so good, especially in TBY Luffy. It's just like having the five cost SR Bonnie freeze one of their Don on a 10 Don Moria play where they want to just go crazy. They can't do it. You just negate it, right? They ever swing with leader or some of their board. You just 10 drop freeze. You go again. You basically, it's basically like a take two turns, right? It's nasty. Um, yeah, it's fine. We'll take a 9k swing. Do you have another Moria, buddy? Um, we can counter this out. Having no events is kind of crazy. Uh, but three Dofies on board, I think we should just have the win. I mean, he's setting up for another Moria turn. But with three Dofies, I think we can just uh, put all our Dawn and... Yeah, put all our Dawn and just swing. Because he's going to be at, what, one card in hand? So, yeah. Sabo Ace. We should be all right. We should be all right here. He probably should have stayed at one life. Just done Sabo stayed at one life. That way he can block two and my third swing just um he takes. I'm not too sure. Um do we have guaranteed game? One, two, three, seven. Yes, the math says we have guaranteed game. So we can take. Oh, that's it. He conceded. GG's. Uh, anyways, guys, that is it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list one more time. 
man, I wish I had more time on this. I would have considered taking it to Texas. I would have played it on the online this week, but uh, the lack of time and not not being able to test as much as I would like definitely hurts. Um, obviously, I've went I went through so many iterations of this deck uh, before I was you know happy with something, and uh, I I came down to this. But you know, even still, after playtesting it even more, it just you know there were some dead turns, a lot of things where I could have made changes. Uh, but that's one of the things that I like to emphasize and. Something that I previously didn't do is I would just write off a card or write off a deck without doing proper testing. And I know a lot of people do that as well. And so I'm really, really trying to emphasize guys to actually do your own testing and, you know, try to really figure out if a card is good or not. Sometimes, you know, the proof isn't always in the pudding. Uh, and so you really have to, you know, put the time in, grind and and test cards, right? You might think a card is ass, but then you know, later down on the road, it's like, oh, this card is actually good. And it works with this combo and it's, you know, used for this and that. And so, uh, yeah, one of the things I like to do, uh, is just not write off things, uh, right away, even though it, it could be apparent that it's bad, you never know, uh, until you test it and, and can actually confirm that. Right. So uh, I'm going to advise you guys to do the same. If you guys are stuck between playing two different cards, I'd suggest just test the two and see what feels better. Obviously, some cards might be better for certain matchups, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can test and, and really have the evidence to, you know, support your claim and be like, yeah, this is better because of this. And that card is better uh, or worse uh, for whatever reason. Right. So anyways, I'm yapping now. I hope you guys enjoyed this green purple dofi video. Probably won't be playing this leader for a while, maybe until 08 uh, once it gets, you know, some better support. Uh, but we'll have to see on that. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the Patreon, like this video, comment, on, comment down below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.